welcome to episode 2 of Crazy Nines, I'm XH298 And I'm Mark5000 And welcome back to our series uh, First of all, uh, thanks to everyone for their uh, wonderful support on YouTube and Reddit In this episode, we're actually going to look at some uh, variations regarding the most commonly played move, Tengen Tengen? You don't say <laughs> I, I mean, I've, all, I've always played this one, like, especially recently, because I started hearing from people that Tengen is the most popular move, and so I decided to start playing it as well. Well, Tengen is interesting. It's, it's the only move on the board that is the, a unique point. At Tengen, you play in the center, and nobody else can play in the center. So it's the point that kind of stands out to beginners, mm -hmm. and beginners open there a lot. but. It's also a bit surprising because professional players seem to prefer to open with Tengen as well. Oh, that's interesting. So, how many games actually have Tengen in like your database of professional games? Well, I have about 370 9x9 games on the professional level that I've cataloged, and 199 of them, I believe, have mm -hmm. Tengen as the opening move for the black player. It's really quite amazing. Over half of the games I've seen open with Tengen on the 9x9 board. Yeah, yeah, and many people, I think, believe that Tengen is the best move on the board. It even has its own census library page. I don't know if that's true for like other 9x9 openings, but Tengen always has a spot in everyone's heart. In my opinion, it just feels so great to play Tengen on 9x9 because the board is very small, so you kind of just get the feeling that you're in control of the, the entire 9 board. Everest. Once you play that 9 uh, once you play that Tengen as black. I, I mean, you play in the center and all of a sudden you're exerting influence over the entire board in all directions. It feels powerful, and indeed it is. When we go through the variations we're about to see, yeah, you know, yeah. how, so, how uh, Black seems to carry a sort of command of the game when they open at ten again. All right, um, so let's look at some uh, actual variations common in the Namana openings. All right, so White can play a lot of responding moves here. Why well, has a lot of choices, but for the well, time being, there's really only five choices. You yeah, know? Um, nobody wants to play on the first line, and the second line is right out. So you're mm -hmm. really only left with three places on the third line and two places on the fourth line. Yeah, and so if we look at them, uh, the most common ones are really just um, if I can pull up the alternate stones here, uh, are we really just C five? And uh, as well as C4, uh, that's right here, and mm -hmm. C3. Yes, Probably. these yeah. are the most common moves. Yeah. Now, and the other moves, mm -hmm. they're not really played on the professional level. So you're you're almost certain to see one of those three responses when you play Tengen. Right. So for this episode, we're just going to look at uh, C5 as one of the most common white responses. So. Um, a lot of interesting things happen here. Um, Mark, what would you play? Actually, what would I play? Yeah. Oh, roll. Uh, pick a few of your favorite moves and roll dice. Uh, <laughs> it's really hard to say which which is the best. Uh, maybe you have a favorite one. Uh, I think the most the most normal way to continue would be to pull back mm -hmm. and take the opposite side of the board from so... white. Oh, uh, it's a very balanced approach. Mm -hmm. um, what white is saying is that uh, you play it in the center, so I'm going to play as close to the center as I can without touching you. It's a very confrontational move. Uh, Black is saying, mm -hmm. alright, you take that side, I take this side, and I've still got the center. Neener, neener, neener. Uh, so it's it's a very daring play, even though it may look mm -hmm. passive, uh, because it's not directly in, in affecting white. It's right. actually making it very hard for white to make a second group. Yes, uh, because Black has that Tengen stone in the center, uh, he's in some sort of advantage if black and white are to split half and half the board. Now, 
Uh, keep in mind that Black's objective is to get more than half. Because the comb there's a comey of uh, 5.5, 5, or 7 as we talked about in the previous episode. Now, so White basically has two options. Um, and we'll categorize those as we uh, go along. So, uh, White can either just p take half of the board or split two groups with two groups. Um, right, yes. Yeah. Now so, let's talk about the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of knight's move would be the normal way to take um, a large part of the board away from black uh, without having to make the decision to make a second group yet. If you're mm -hmm. going to keep your first group and keep it solid, this is the this is a great way to do that. Right, so let's say if black uh, wants to maximize his territory and attach at c4. And Ooh, can you do that? It looks really severe. I mean, yeah, now the bottom area is going to be all blacks. It feels like natural, and uh, I think white responding here is also a uh, very natural. Yes, it's kind of the obvious choice for me. Yes, um, we know that uh, it's a basic instinct to bend after attachment, so mm -hmm. this move should not surprise anyone. Yeah, now black actually has uh, two options here. For example, he can play uh, d4. That's kind of the solid move. And white has a few choices, so I, I feel like the normal way uh, for white to continue would just be the extension at b3, so you play that d4, I'm gonna just fix right. my shape. Is it big enough? Well, uh, I feel like black still has more than half of the board, but there is d2, the open skirt on the second line. So I think yes, it could be a good right. game this way, right? So yes. if black attaches, then basically the goal for black and white is to get half of the board. Right. In this kind of position, it's really hard for white to make a second group. So mm -hmm. white is going to have to look at bending around all the places. We talk about uh, e8 here. We talk about right. d2 here. And try to make the left group as large as possible. Right. And there are a number of variations that could follow after this, but mm -hmm. generally this is one way to play. And... okay. What I was wondering okay. though, um, what if white tanukis? Uh, it's possible. Uh, you could play this way if you don't think that having one group is enough. If you don't think it's big enough and you disagree with this there, then you can just invade right away and you can aim to make that group live and the idea being that if you live with the bottom right and you live with the top left, then you're probably going to win the game. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because black has that Comey pressure, so keep in mind that if white lives two groups, it's going to be very hard for black to find more than half of the board. Right, exactly. Right, so in this case, let's say uh, black tries oh, right. to attack one of the big uh, groups. Yeah, yeah, you didn't reinforce the left side, so that's the weakness now. Yeah, so you tanuki, so that's where I'm going to play. And if white blocks, then we have this. All oh, right, it's kind so of black, hard for white. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard for white here. Uh, black is very thick, and uh, even though white has kind of half taken c6 stone, it's not a solid capture yet, and white will need to struggle with uh, life at, in the g3 area. So I I don't like this one that much. Right, that kind of variation can be playable, however. Yeah, but I I think here. Uh, white can also choose to uh, peep first, and it's right. it's a little that bit different because white instead of yeah. yeah yeah because white instead of uh, splitting at like g three and just starting a second group is kind of in between. So uh, he is not making a second group, but he's also trying to play aggressively to get half of the board. Right, and white can still play uh, the cover move uh, against the clamp. And black can still bend on the on, or the Atari from the underside. Uh, it's a similar variation, but in that case, uh, white isn't worried about having to live with two groups. Um, white just has to bank on the fact that the first group is large enough, and that black won't play too many forcing moves on the lower side to get so much of an area. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that probe. Um, let's <coughs> see. Against that, black's not going to play an extension or a nobi uh, because that's too slack. Uh, right. We're going to bend on one side or the other. And, for example, this? Yes, probably that one. 
Yeah, basically this way, White's trying to live uh, in, in in a corner. So right, if White yes. gets to live, I don't think Black will have enough territory to win this game. Well, maybe not. Uh, remember, there is the C6 clamp weakness, so mm -hmm. it's not like the the lower left area is contested. Right. Uh, it can be Black's at any point. And this is co still complicated, and so I think this could be definitely an option for both right, players. Right, so. Uh, I haven't seen any professional games that go like this, but it seems possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, back to here. Now, yes. we talked about Black playing at d4. Now, Black can also try to shut off the open skirt at d2 by saying, you know what? We're not going to let you in. Right? Right. This move does two things. Uh, one positive, one negative. First, it's, it's a little looser, so it protects the, the invasion around G3 better. Um, but the drawback is that there is no clamp at C6 anymore. And white is likely to play around that area right away and like, highlight the weakness. So, for example, I feel yes. like white taking D5 is nothing wrong, because it just feels like an obvious exchange. So you play there, I'm gonna bump. If black answers, then we're back to that pattern um, where we try to get half of the board. Right. So for example, and yeah. White can try to take uh, a single group here, uh, but then you have the lingering question, is this big enough? The mm -hmm. answer may be no. It, it looks like it could be a half point game if White plays here, but maybe the half point is in Black's favor. Uh, it's kind of hard to say without a concrete variation. Yeah. Uh, in the alternative, white might attach or invade. It's going mm -hmm. to be similar to the other. Uh, yeah. But you know that you have the trade off that black doesn't have the clamping stuff on the left. Um, but black does have uh, a bit of a more solid base from which to attack the invader. Right. So, for example, let's say you invade here at g3. And. Yes, that's a nice move. Mm hmm. And black clamps. And what do we do? In this position, um, yeah, well, you could push through. Uh, you could also play d6. I feel like pushing through is not very good for white, though, for some reason. Because even though uh, white's taking right. those two stones... Somehow I don't like it. Yeah. Notice that how the how the d7 stone and the g3 stone are separated. And so that's, that's why it doesn't make me feel good. Because <laughs> black... Right. It looks like Black's going to get yeah. everything. World right, the lower left will be White, but it's going to be hard for White to have any more territory after that. Yeah. Now, alternatively, um, this block comes to mind, and if we right, this was this... my first reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, because uh, the corner is solid, White doesn't need to worry anything. Uh, about like life and death of that top left group, so black will need to but, basically kill but this. But then you can attack this. Yeah, right. It's such a severe attack. Uh, uh, we say on the uh, 19 by 19 size board that the, this kind of move is bad, but on the small board, uh, it's actually very effective at removing ice base. Yeah. So why will uh, have... we'll talk a little bit more about this kind of move yeah. later? So why will have to. Uh, try to live here, but it's it's going to be very hard. So what if White actually gives up those three stones? Because I feel like, um, I mean those are possible. big. Yeah, so, this might be the best for White. So Black can take those, and it looks very intimidating, because Black is very thick after the capture of those three stones. But if you think about it, right? Yes. What we were talking about earlier was if white can live with two groups on the board, it's going to be very hard for black to find more than half the territory, no matter what. So even though black has captured three stones here and he's very thick, there is still going to be a long, hard battle for him to get uh, enough to compensate for the Komi. Right, White's upper side is huge, and if White lives easily there, then White will probably win the game. 
Um, but it isn't 100% clear that white is going to live with the top mm -hmm. and the bottom. Right. Uh, so that would be black's focus for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. So hopefully black will try to uh, do something with his thickness. Now, uh, we talked about a few variations regarding this move. So the knight's move. Uh, but what if white wants to be more aggressive? Like we look at the probe earlier, what if white plays at h5 right now? That is a kind of uh, an asking move, isn't it? Yeah. You're saying, uh, black, which way are you going to answer? And then you use that information to help you decide where to play. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of like probing in 1919 and this uh, non variant, the concept is the same. So, for example, black block right. on one side, right? Right, and as we said, it's the same as the, the probing situation we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, black does not want to extend, or, or nobi in Japanese, because uh, it's going to be considered a slack move, and white mm -hmm. gets a, 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 a... white enjoys a beneficial exchange, you could say. Right. So but, black plays this one. But when you look at this move, uh, it's basically sending a message to white, okay, I want this side, right? So white can actually make decisions here. Um, for example, d3 is very powerful because it threatens to uh, make the h5 stone alive again. And obviously black is not going to simply target h4 because that would be too inefficient. So it's right, kind of exactly. asking black where to go again. Right. Now black might uh, uh, respond by defending at f3, but that means white will have gotten d3 and sentai so this could right, be and then still white a good can game get both knights moves at once yeah yeah this was a luxury that white didn't enjoy when you just start with the knight's move without the probe mm -hmm. and of, of course black is not going to play that one no it's too slow yeah and uh hmm but there's other white choices too and there's other black choices in response yeah. Uh, so don't think that just because you you Han A here and then play the knight's move mm -hmm. that you're going to win the game. Uh, it's so for example this one. I kind of I kind of invented this attachment actually. <laughs> That's a bold assertion. <laughs> but to be honest, I didn't I haven't seen it before. No, I I haven't followed any nine one pro games. Probably some probably has played it before. But this is kind of looking like our games. A very complicated fighting. Right. And not that one. Oh, don't show those variations yet. We'll get there. Yeah, I, I know. I just slipped. Yeah. Where is it? Okay, here it is. So, complicated fighting right. patterns. Yes. Uh, I don't know where this is going. So, but, but you can see, kind of see the pattern there. White's uh, having two groups at the same time, so basically his plan is to live both of them. And even though Black is relatively strong in the center, we haven't seen any of his territory yet. So it's right, kind of yes. up to Black and White to decide the outcome of this. Well, you could say that about every variation, come on. Yeah, I guess. It's so, up to the players to decide the outcome. Alright, uh, let's, okay. let's continue. So sorry. What other options do we have? Uh, we have attachments against the white stone. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe this kind of move would surprise our beginners, because um, in 19 by 19 we say uh, don't attach to you know, don't attach to a group, and we say that because it tends to make the group you attach to stronger. Mm -hmm. And we say that mostly when beginners play it, it's a bad exchange. Um, right. However, there's limited space on the 9x9 board, uh, which makes contact moves almost uh, quite a bit stronger. It means that you're, when you attach to a stone, then you press forcefully against it so that you aim at all the territory on the other side of the stone. Um, mm -hmm. When you do that in 19x19, it, it leaves that group a little strong on 9x9 it leaves the group a bit over-concentrated, so it's just a bit of a difference there. Right, because the borders of the 9x9 board are closer to the C5 stone than like a normal situation in 19x19 go. 
Right, because, so it's much harder yeah. to punish. So what does white do? For example, I, I what comes to my mind first would be C, uh, would be G5. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the idea being that if black is going to spend another move on the left side, then maybe you gain something. And uh, again, the idea is for white to live with two groups. Uh, this will be a common theme uh, no matter what opening you choose. Um, either white has to have uh, one large group about half the size or just under half the size of the board, or white must make two groups and live with both. This this feels tricky, because white has a stone at c5 and they're just hanging there. So like I kind of want to attack both at the same time. For example, I want to play at g6. But then again, we are we're gonna go into this sort of co uh, complicated position, and like or like look at how many groups there are already, right? Right. It seems like there are a lot of cutting places for white. Um, and actually, this position showed up a lot in games played by uh, professional players from Taiwan against the Mogo Bot in mm -hmm. 2011 and 2012. Um, yeah. We're fortunate enough to have a bit of commentary from the Mogo team about how those games turned out. Um, as, as a result of the computer analysis, and I, I realize that computers haven't necessarily surpassed professionals yet, mm -hmm. um, but they seem to believe that this sort of play for black um, was hard for black to win in this kind of position uh, yeah, because black is really fragmented too. not that i not that i hate this kind of position because i'm a four done and you know don't like fighting <laughs> i i still like white here so i guess we're gonna find other right and i things. should i should say that there are six professional games with this position and black only won one of those six games uh so statistically maybe maybe it's not the best best variation to uh -huh. choose in your own game okay so let's see here now, G6 doesn't work. What about D5? I feel like it could be solid if, let's say, uh, you want to pull the stone out at, G uh, at C6. Yes. And I can just basically go with your plan. And, and this feels good to me because, uh, as we can see, right now, uh, white has two groups. But black is also very solid. I like the shape. For example, right, say, it's definitely a yeah. good shape. So if you play here, uh, for example, the jump, one space jump at G7, then black doesn't need to worry about uh, the weakness of his shape because it's already pretty strong. And right, and we've seen these kind of responses to the attachment um, in the previous variation. Mm -hmm. So our viewers already know the strengths and weaknesses of A and B here. Yeah, and notice that black is getting half the board, but white still needs an extra move, for example, E7 to connect uh, both of its groups. And that means black has the initiative. So, right. And black also has some monkey jump stuff yeah, on the left side, you uh, which is fun split. for beginners. Yeah, black also has a lot of options here, E7. I think I. I split here. Right. This is complicated though. So if you prefer uh, this type of opening with uh, white and, and uh, ending up with two groups, uh, feel free to try. Oh yeah, so let us know how it went. I'm maybe really curious. Actually, we plan to review some Q level games in the future. So mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to getting any at least one or two submissions. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is one move I put in the demo board, uh, D7, you can also try that out. Right, it's also pretty severe. It looks like white's gonna lose the left side. White's pulling out, and then... Similar idea, you're gonna get yeah. split. This is uh, one of the variations you showed me. Uh, White plan at right. Six. This was played. This was played by one of the professional players against the Mogo Bot, where the Mogo Bot was white in this game. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So let's see here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So the idea being that black has the left side and um, left side. white has the in does not have the ability to make a second group anymore. White has to make the first group big, and yeah. all of the. 
all of White's children in that basket. I feel like this is not big enough for White somehow. But I it could does be not wrong. look big enough, and indeed, uh, Black Black won that game. So we can re recommend the D5 move for for Black. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the conclusion is if you want to just play a solid game, then D5 is fine. Right, what other options are available for White in this position? Hmm. Uh, if White doesn't like the other, I mean, White can also play this. Just basically, just no, start fighting right away. Well, that's my style. <laughs> This this could be another fight. And right, this happens a lot in professional games too. It's a like little bit similar to uh, Yeah, it's a little bit similar to uh the previous sequence we showed you. Uh black plays a G6 and uh, white has a stone at G5. Could bend around at B4. That could happen. Uh, uh, it looks natural, but actually if you play this it's a bit of a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. There was only one professional game in, in, that I know about played in this position, um, and it was by uh, Catalan Toranu. Uh, he's a five-down professional from Europe. Mm -hmm. um, he played this in order to trip up the the uh, opposing bot's uh, opening book, mm -hmm. um, but he commented that it was an inferior move. And why is that, actually? This feels alright to me. Let's see, he didn't explain exactly, but if, um, if you play as the game did, which is d4, and mm -hmm. C3, then what you're looking at is a lot of uh, weaknesses in Right, cut white points. Right, and it looks like black can have the, the whole right side if you're not careful. So yeah. white has to decide to invade sometime, and it's a bit of a harder position to manage than if you just invade sooner. Right. So... Uh, for instance, before B4, you play G5. And you get that invasion in, so then you're not as concerned with having to live both. Yeah, so... Oh, actually this was played in a lot of my 9 by 9 games, so I have to pay attention to those more. I always thought they were okay, but... What do I right, know? Right, and what, maybe what we're talking about is only maybe a, a two-point difference. Yeah. Alright, so let's look at more options. Uh, in this episode, what we're gonna do is basically... We're going to talk about all the options that you have, so... I can give you guys... My ideas. For example, you can right. also play to the side. Um, a while ago, we showed you uh, Black's uh, retreating at G5 and White playing the nice move. Now, if, if we reverse the order of uh, the last two stones, or like the color of the last two stones a little bit, you can definitely go this way. Now, this is a funny position. Oh, yeah. Th it's kind of like symmetric. Like uh, about the center of the board, right? It looks like a pinwheel. Yeah, I feel like it... yeah, this is not good for black though. I don't know why. It just it, it just feels like white has two groups again, and black's <laughs> central pinwheel is not making any territory. Right, but actually, my computer analysis showed that this was favorable for black. Ooh. Um, the the left side isn't one hundred percent solid. Uh, you can actually cut it. Uh, with a move like c6 um, and you can threaten to cut through it with a move like d6 mm -hmm. uh, and aside from that uh, white has two groups he strengthened one you get to punish the second so you can take a move like g3 and ask white how he's gonna live with the other group mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like black is without options it just looks like black short on territory now right uh, but you do For have to consider this, white right? is Right, exactly. Uh, you have to consider that White is also um, uh, with uh, her own set of weaknesses. Uh, um, when one player it looks really strong and doesn't have territory, and the other player looks like they have a lot of territory but they're not really strong, then maybe the position is more equal than uh, it at first appears. Right, it's kind of even now. So, but what, what other options do Black have? For example, we can play here, right? I saw a lot of this kind of opening in my games versus Valkyria. I don't know if you guys know, but Valkyria is a really strong bot. Right, and this position has occurred in um, uh, professional games too. Um, in particular, there's uh, one uh, from the Fuego bot as black player. Um, interestingly, no professional players played this, but it seems even yeah. to me. Um, against uh, uh, Chun Sun Chao, uh, four, four down professional, um, and uh, White won that game. Uh, the professional player won that game. I haven't and tried that white one. And White will take the left side area. 
Oh, but not if you crosscut like this. If you crosscut, then you're crazy. Aw. Oh, you're just crazy like me, I guess. I was slaughtered oh, by... I was slaughtered by the bot, so... I might give this a try, actually. Right, that's that's a way that, that, that I actually like very much. Um, and actually, I was talking with um, uh, an insight from Japan about uh, one of my games where I had a position where I played this kind of opening. Um, and he showed me a, a spot where I could have uh, had a, a win uh, in the end, uh, playing white. Uh, I could have won by half a point against the Valkyria bot. Um, oh. but... No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Right, this is this is a very a complicated fight. position. Yeah, um, to be a good because fight. both players are fragmented and they're gonna have a big fight. Okay, um, so that was G six. What else? I I saw and this in one of my underneath. games. Yeah, I saw this in one of my games, and the game went like roughly like this. So we just started a crazy fight. It probably wasn't good for me, but I won the game, so <laughs> I was playing as white. That was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, you won the game because you were you. You didn't win the game because you were opening. Be real. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that one too, You yeah. to attach underneath here, and then to clamp on top. Right. It, w it was within my uh, expectations. I didn't play that one, though. I could right. also play here. Uh, jump at E7. Oh right, there's no there's and no there, reason why you need to be symmetrical with your, your and choices. You can also play a C7. That one has many possibilities, and these are just a few of them. Right, even the 9x9 size is so vast. You know, it's it's not a solved game. Uh, I don't expect for the game to be solved in the near future. Right. You know, so, so we, we ha you haven't even solved 7x7 seven seven go. It's insane. Why well, just ha well, also has a lot of options here. For example, uh, I can basically secure one group, and that's also one of the strategies. Uh, you basically just get oh, yeah, one certainly. group first. There's... Yeah, and then uh, once you're ready, like that, you invade. Bam! Right. Mic drop. It says we. Listen to the kids, bro. You were saying earlier, uh, White has the strategy: make one large group or make uh, two groups. And uh, you have to labor over the decision: is now the time to make a second group, um, or is one group good enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and White also has a lot of options. For example, this and that. Mm -hmm. You basically mm -hmm. just try putting the stones at a different place. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, is that is that the secret? Kind of. Maybe not on the first line for now. Place. Maybe okay. not on the first line for now. Right, and, and that's what we've seen thus far. Most of the moves, except for this one one move where we had the probe, mm -hmm. um, uh, most of these moves are appearing above the third line. If you have a special purpose for a second line move, maybe it's best to avoid it. Yeah, because in that right now you want to control the center, and right. playing on second Honestly, line is not the exactly same. the best way to do it, right? Right. Honestly, it's the same in the 19 by 19 size. Um, we say that moves in the second line are small in the opening, and it's no different here. Mm -hmm. Actually, the center is more important on the 9x9 board. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe we have options like this. Oh, I haven't seen that one before. <laughs> it actually transposes into the version oh, yeah. we've seen before. Can you tell? Mm, this one, right? It's where... Right. It, yeah. You can see. Uh, or it's, you can also play... Exactly the same. You can also play my favorite move, F5. Yes, that's that should be everybody's new favorite move. <laughs> Take that one. Uh, but home, we've guys. already we've already talked about it. Um, so when when black uh, plays uh, mm -hmm. pulls back crooked like that, then white can't attach. Yeah. But then you get yeah, you move, get moves possible. like this. So uh, new groups. Okay, what right. about so, oh, here? Still... We Bob. talked about backing off. We talked about uh, playing a nice move to the side. What about the bump? Well, you're not gonna sit on white, are you? It's like kind of rude. Why are you gonna be? So oh, sorry. <laughs> um. So white has, I know someone, some people hate. Yeah, that this song. is a one-way street. White's gonna, white's gonna extend for sure. Uh, and then what will black do? Uh, 
what is gonna on it or mm, you take the right but, side sure I'll take that side but I feel I feel like taking that side too so I'm like right then then white's gonna gonna keep going here yeah I guess also, I can also Hane. but then again it's kind of um, just white right. taking one side black taking another side again mm-hmm so also possible if you if you sum it up then black has a lot of options even after white c5 even after that very specific branch uh, black has for example g5 uh, like we discussed earlier so black has g5 mm -hmm. backing off and uh, swaying to the side that d3 or d7 you know symmetry Learn your right uh -huh. and i do want to emphasize that all mm. of these moves that we've talked about have been the subject of extensive computer research yeah um, and uh to the best of my knowledge they're they're pretty even uh even result for both if played right uh so you can find your favorite one mm -hmm. and maybe uh experiment with it a little and see where it goes for you yeah so well we we went through a lot of uh, like openings involving black playing at tenga and white playing at c5 but I think for next episode, what we're going to do is to introduce you to more openings. For example, we didn't talk about C4 and C3, and what's going to happen with those, right? And right, some, some of those different. positions might be like uh, transposing back to what we talked about today. But there are some new versions, and we want to show you guys. Uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, we also want to do an episode where we showcase uh, mm -hmm. a professional game. Uh, right. Playing at the ten gen and C five positions. I uh, want to see so that, that we one. Can have an idea, right? So that we can give viewers an idea of how one of those games might go. Uh, watching professional games can be very instructive. Yeah. So if any of these episodes help you improve your Go Quest rating, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> but anyways, until then, thanks. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.